Hello, this is Dr. Larry Green. Today I would like to show you how to very efficiently process food waste. And in order to do this, we're going to talk about Bokashi fermenting. Bokashi is the Japanese word for fermented organic material. So what we're going to do to very efficiently convert food waste into a high value product is to use a culture mix, which is on a wheat brand matrix we produce the culture mix literally in boxcars overnight. Very stable product, has a shelf life in excess of five years, and it takes 25 pounds of the Bukashi culture mix, our wheat bran culture mix, to process one ton of waste. That one ton of waste, when pulverized or granulated and mixed with the culture mix, 25 pounds per ton, will turn into a biopulp in about 10 days. However, in order to do this, you have to totally exclude oxygen and you have to really efficiently granulate or pulverize the food waste while mixing with the culture mix. This is easily done in a variety of techniques. and We've developed the technology, have both domestic and international patents on the process for industrial scale processing. Now one of the great advantages of taking food waste and converting it to a biopulp bio is that it has a high value for agriculture. Every ton of food waste that's converted to the biopulp in approximately two weeks is worth about $1,000 conservatively. That ton of food waste that's been converted to the biopulp can then be further treated to separate it into a tea and a cake. Now the tea is used as a foiler spray or as a drip irrigant diluted 50 to 1. When you use the tea and the cake in agriculture, you can basically eliminate the need for fertilizers. You will see increased production on, on food crops. You will see a great reduction in pest pressure. You will see a con conservation of water because the the effect of putting the biopulp and the tea back into the soil is to expand the microbial flora that normally inhabit soil but are really struggling to survive, generally speaking. Partly because of high heat, dehydration, lack of nutrients is the most critical factor. But when you take the food waste and you recycle it back through in a biopulp and then convert it to a tea and cake and put it into the soil, you're really recovering high value nutrients because in the process of fermenting, you're metabolizing all of that material and creating essentially what I call a smorgasbord for the natural organisms that live in the soil. And what this really does is it, it introduces both numbers and diversity of microflora that normally inhabit that soil. They expand their population and because they are living cells, they actually much more avidly hold the water into the soil. So not only are you conserving water, but you're also improving the nutrient base. And the other interesting thing about this process of fermentation and recycling food waste efficiently is that you eliminate greenhouse gases. No carbon dioxide of any consequence is formed. No other gases are formed. No methane is formed, even though people oftentimes worry about that under anaerobic conditions. The reason being is because in this fermentation process, the pH is rapidly reduced well below six. In fact, your end point will be about four and a half or three to four and a half. In this process, you actually create an environment that is totally toxic to methanogens, the organisms that form methane. The other really striking and interesting advantage of fermenting food waste and recycling it inefficient fermenters is that you kill pathogens. E. coli, salmonella, and a number of other organisms that thrive and are abundant on putrefying waste and are found in almost all trash bins and dumpsters or wherever there is food waste are actually destroyed in this mechanism. And they're destroyed by a number of interesting processes. Not only is the fact that you're reducing and eliminating oxygen for the most part, changing and shifting the pH to a very low environment, you're actually producing a number of materials that are inherently toxic to Salmonella, E. coli, and other organisms. And you're also using the fungal organisms that are in this culture mix that have their own natural antibiotics that are inhibitory or toxic to competing pathogens and 
in bacteria that would be looking for nutrients. What we're producing is a very stable environment in the biopulp where the organisms are what we'll call commensal, which means they can get along with each other without destroying each other. In fact, the relationship is symbiotic, which means that each one enhances the other. And this is a very exciting time in agriculture where we can change the way we treat the soil to improve the soil instead of robbing it. In addition to the process of killing pathogens, returning nutrients and metabolites to the soil that have high value for natural microflora, we are also reducing the nitrate phosphate runoff. Why is that? When you produce the biopulp in this manner, you produce a number of very interesting minerals, especially when it's mixed in with the soil. One of the common minerals that's found everywhere, and in fact in water systems, tends to be a, a problem for, uh, for your city or your urban center in trying to keep pipes and valves clean and free of this mineral deposit is a mineral called struvite, magnesium aluminum phosphate. This turns out to be a wonderful metabolite or mineral really that deposits because it's quite insoluble in water which is why it causes problems in pipes and in valves and for your for your water department but it turns out in agriculture it's extremely useful because it is a slow time release of phosphate and ammonia. So uh, magnesium ammonium phosphate is a struvite mineral that is produced naturally when this biopulp is mixed back into the soil. That, that particular material is actually produced commercially and sold in agriculture, but it's very expensive. How much more simpler is it to take food waste that we're drowning in, allow it to metabolize, and then form the mineral naturally, and it's basically free. It's very simple to use this process. It only takes about 14 days. And what I want to show is part of the equipment that we use in this process. Now, one of the essential units in fermenting is to have a well-constructed fermenter that will withstand the rigors of repeated recycling of material and will be structurally sufficiently sound to exclude oxygen, to not be damaged by the biopulp because of the low pH, and to make it convenient and easy to handle the waste. So we build a three cubic yard fermenter. We've done a great deal of research to try to determine where we could have obtain fermenters or how we could produce these in an efficient process and somewhat to our dismay we discovered that most plastics and most dumpsters and most materials that are out there commercially now are just not going to meet the job. That's partly because they are too weak to support three cubic yards. Three cubic yards will translate into about two tons of material when you've, when you've granulated it, pulverized it, mixed it with a culture mix. And that means you're going to end up with two tons of end bioproduct. No gases are lost, no water is lost, everything's conserved. That amount of weight being put into most containers and shifted around will cause them to change their shape. They will no longer keep and maintain a low oxygen environment which is required for fermentation. Moreover, and the most troubling thing, is they will tend to break down. They will, they will get fractures or leaks or uh, just become so corroded over time because of the low acidity, they just cannot handle the job. So we construct uh, out of 1 8 inch carbon steel a bin with continuous welds on the interior and stitch welding on the outside, a very rigorous design which is a trapezoidal configuration for a reason, and a very low profile making it easy to handle that will withstand the rigors of two tons of waste being cycled through this fermenter over and over again. And we have designed a seal made out of the same carbon steel and all of this is powder coated which protects it from the acidity formed in the process. The acidity is due to carboxylic acids and sufficiently excludes the oxygen because we have a uniform flat surface completely around the perimeter of this fermenter that the seal will fall down onto. So the seal itself weighs about 180 pounds. 
The fermenter with a seal are about 800 pounds. It has built into the bottom pockets and the pockets for forklifts are designed so that you can either use it straight off with a forklift using the pockets to move the fermenters around into the appropriate position or you can put it on a pallet and move it with a pallet jack. Either way it works just fine. But it is designed for efficiency. So there are eyelets on both sides of the seal. You will need a hoist or a chain uh, with some hooks on it to hook into these eyelets to lift this lid or you need four strong people to lift it at the corners. Easiest, most efficient way is to just build a chain link with hooks on each end so when you open up the bio fermenter you can actually uh, easily handle the lid without any danger and set it down where you need it. The bin itself, the fermenter, after it's been opened, when the biopulp has reached its end point, which takes about 10 days to 14 days at room temperature, higher temperatures will not harm it. It can be as hot as you want, will do no damage at all. You will not get putrefaction. You will not have flies or insects. You won't have maggots because none of those things can survive in this environment. What you will have, though, is a very wonderful material that can be recycled back through the soil. This fermenter, the bin, after the seal is removed, is then transported and tipped on its side. We have a hydraulic tipper that will do that. And the biopulp slides out and can then be, it can be packaged and used directly in the field in this manner. Or more efficiently, it can be run through a dewatering unit and separated into tea and cake. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail and I'll show you some of the close up pictures of the bin in a moment. Hello, this is Dr. Larry Green. I'm the founder of Bakashi Cycle and I'm going to give you a close-up inspection of the three cubic yard Bakashi Cycle fermenting industrial scale bin. So here you can see the the bin from a little bit of a distance. It's uh, very low profile. It stands approximately 31 inches from the floor to the top. Uh, it's about eight and a half feet long and about five feet wide. It's trapezoid in shape. And all of these features were specifically designed to make it efficient in processing large-scale food waste industrial activities. Now, the trapezoidal process and its long, low profile are very convenient because at the end of the process of fermenting, which takes about two weeks, the fermenter can be tipped forward on its long axis and because of the sloping end point uh, at each end, you can allow the biopulp that's formed to slide directly into the next activity that you're going to be engaged in and that uh, one of those activities that's of high value is to run it through a dewatering unit uh, so that you can separate it into tea and cake. The seal on the top, as you can see, is slightly lifted and tilted up in this particular video to show you uh, in more detail the eye hooks which are placed in the seal, two on each side, and this allows you to use a chain that can be put on a forklift or on a hoist to lift the lid, which uh, seal the lid is about 180 pounds. Four people could do it, but it's easier to do it with a chain that's constructed to do this. And this makes it convenient to lift the seal and remove it at any time you need to, either for filling or for emptying the uh, fermenter after it's been used. Now you will notice as we walk along that the edge of the fermenter has a very flat surface uniformly surrounding the entire perimeter. And this flat surface fits inside the seal and with the 180 pound pressure of the carbon steel that's powder coated on this surface, all oxygen is excluded. And you can see inside, probably not very well because of this lighting, but there is a continuous weld and seal at all points. So it's hermetically sealed at every corner and on every edge and the seal on the top is completed when the seal lid is dropped down. 
In the corner of each unit we have 14 gauge heavy eyelets, sorry that's uh, 7 gauge heavy eyelets which also have an opening so that you can lift with a chain, hoist or forklift. And on the bottom of the unit we also have built in pockets for forklift or you can place the whole bin on a standard pallet and move it around with a pallet jack. On the outside you will notice that there's stitch welding everywhere around the, the edges which adds to the structural strength. And so a three cubic yard fermenter and bin as we have here can process in a single filling with pulverized and inoculated material three cubic yards and that translates into two tons. Now we do that by running it through a machine and a granulator while adding to that pulverized granulated material culture mix which is in this example is 25 pounds which is enough material to process one ton. So overall just to summarize this is very easy to convert food waste into a high value product to put it into a fermenter that excludes oxygen, in this case powder coated made out of carbon steel that has the rigidity and strength to hold up to repeated cycles in use. And in so doing, you're able to convert that food waste into a product that has agricultural value, eliminates the putrefaction factor, kills pathogens, and gives you a useful product that can create real profits and do real good for the soil. Thank you very much.